Let's examine external resistances to mass transport in reacting systems. Here, as an illustrative example, let's use flow past a catalyst pellet. We'll say that all resistance to mass transport is confined to a thin stagnant layer of thickness delta depicted here by this purple line. In this case, we'll assume that the thickness of the boundary layer is constant with time and that no reaction occurs within the boundary layer. If the thickness of this boundary layer delta is much, much smaller than the radius of our particle, we can essentially treat this as a one-dimensional problem where we don't need to consider the curvature of our catalyst pellet. So here's our physical situation where we have the concentration of some species A equal to the concentration of the bulk fluid at the edge of the boundary layer. We have a boundary layer of thickness delta, and then we have some different concentration at the surface of our catalyst pellet, CAS. So here we'll assume that the catalyst particle is non-porous or that it has no gradients inside of it. So this means there's no internal resistance of mass transport and the concentration CAS is the same throughout the entire reacting medium. So if we consider some reaction A goes to B, we can describe the steady state flux of A by diffusion using Fick's first law. So here we'll assume that we have equal molar counter diffusion of A and B. And so we can write that the flux of A is equal to minus the diffusion coefficient of A times the concentration gradient of A with respect to position X. So here for our coordinate system, we'll define X this way, where the surface of our catalyst pellet will be X equals zero. So by conservation of mass, the flux of A must be constant throughout the boundary layer. What that means is that if we differentiate the flux of A with respect to position X, this must be equal to zero. So if we differentiate this expression here and set it equal to zero, we can write that the second derivative of the concentration of A with respect to X is equal to zero. This differential equation can be solved with the two following boundary conditions. We can write that the concentration of A is equal to CAS at X equals zero, and the concentration of A is equal to the bulk value, CAB, at X equals delta, at the edge of the boundary layer. So this solution gives this linear profile that the concentration of A at any point in the boundary layer is equal to CAS plus the difference of CAB and CAS times the position X divided by delta. We can then simply write the flux of A as minus the diffusion coefficient of A divided by the boundary layer thickness delta times the concentration of A in the bulk minus the concentration of A at the surface. So this value here, minus DAB over delta, we can call the mass transport coefficient, which will give the notation Kc hat. So at steady state, we cannot have accumulation of A in the boundary layer, so the flux of A by diffusion to the surface must be equal to the consumption of A by reaction. So let's say the reaction is first order in A. We can write that the rate is equal to a kinetic rate constant, K sub S, times the concentration of A at the surface. So note here that our rate depends on C A sub S. So this is an unknown quantity which we can't measure because it differs from the bulk concentration. So this rate is equal to the rate of A reaching the surface by diffusion, which again we can write as the mass transport coefficient times the concentration driving force from the bulk to the surface. So note here that the flux from Fick's first law has units of moles per area per time. So our reaction rate must be defined in terms of area available for reaction. Solving this equation for CAS, the concentration at the catalyst surface, we can write CAS is equal to mass transport coefficient K sub C times the bulk concentration of A divided by the sum of the kinetic rate constant and the mass transport coefficient. Substituting this into our first order rate equation gives an expression that looks like this, the rate is equal to the kinetic rate constant times CAS, which we can write as the mass transport coefficient times the bulk concentration divided by the sum of the kinetic rate constant and the mass transport coefficient. We can rearrange this a little bit to write the rate expression in the following form. And so we can see that the rate can be written in terms of the bulk concentration and an observed rate constant, where here the observed rate constant can be related to the true kinetic rate constant, K sub S, and the mass transport coefficient, K sub C. So let's consider two limiting cases. So first let's consider the case where the mass transport is very rapid or reaction is very slow comparatively. So this could be the case if the diffusion coefficient of A is very high or the boundary layer thickness is very small due to very rapid flow past the particle. 
So in this case, the K observed will be dominated by the kinetic rate constant. So our observed rate constant will be essentially equal to the true reaction rate constant and CAS will be approximately equal to the CA bulk. So here we have very little concentration gradient within our boundary layer and the reaction rate that we measure is the true kinetic reaction rate. So this is the situation we've been considering throughout the course. So let's consider the opposite extreme. If mass transport is slow or the reaction is comparatively very rapid. So this could be the case if we had a low diffusion coefficient or a very large boundary layer thickness, or more likely because we're operating at high temperatures where the kinetic reaction rate constant is very large. So in this case, the reaction rate constant will be much larger than the mass transport coefficient, and consequently, K observed will be essentially equal to the mass transport coefficient. In this case, the surface concentration will approach zero, and so essentially A is reacted immediately as soon as it reaches the catalyst surface. In this case, the rate that we will measure, it will be equal to the mass transport coefficient times the maximum driving force that we could have, which would be CA bulk minus zero when the surface is fully depleted of A. So this is just going to be equal to the mass transport coefficient times the bulk concentration. So here we can see that the measured rate is entirely dictated by mass transport. In between these two cases, we're going to have an observed rate that depends on both mass transport and surface reactions. We can see therefore that transport limitations obscure the true kinetics of the reaction. To understand reaction kinetics, we should operate under conditions where the surface reaction rather than diffusion limits the rates. We'll discuss in more detail how we can differentiate whether diffusion or reaction is limiting rates in subsequent lectures.